Let's quickly look at this equation where MAP, mean arterial pressure, equals cardiac output times resistance. The cardiac output has to do with the heart, while the resistance has to do with our blood vessels. In addition to the heart and our blood vessels, the blood volume will also contribute to MAP. So if we have an increase in the resistance or an increase in blood volume, then our MAP will go up. So for blood volume, I'll just write it out as BV. So increase resistance, increase blood volume, increase MAP. And of course, our heart will play a significant factor. But for now, I just want to focus on the resistance and the blood volume. That way we can better understand how the extrinsic controls work. And if our resistance were to go down or our blood volume were to decrease, then so will our MAP. So a drop in the resistance or blood volume, then mean arterial pressure will also decrease. Furthermore, the resistance is greatly affected by the radius of the blood vessel. So if the blood vessel were to vasodilate, whereby the radius increases, then the resistance will go down. And on the flip side, if we have vasoconstriction, then the narrowing of the lumen of the blood vessel will result in an increase in resistance. So what does this have to do with the extrinsic controls, the neural and hormonal mechanisms to regulate GFR? But before we get into the details, let's look at the purpose of the extrinsic controls. The purpose is to regulate GFR, glomerular filtration rate, to maintain the systemic blood pressure. So their objective is systemic, the overall blood pressure, not necessarily just the kidneys. Furthermore, extrinsic controls will override intrinsic controls, which is again renal autoregulation, should the systemic blood pressure or blood volume need to be increased. Renal autoregulation will predominate as long as MAP is between 80 to 180 millimeters of mercury. And if we fall out of that range, then extrinsic controls will take over. So during periods of rest, what we find is the intrinsic controls will predominate. Now, what about the extrinsic controls? It's mostly neural during times of rest, and it will reduce stimulation of the systemic vasomotor nerve, resulting in the vasodilation of the afferent arteriole. So let's look at the image down on the bottom right-hand corner and I highlighted the nerve supply. The nerve supply is the sympathetic vasomotor nerve. This is a nerve associated with the sympathetic division of the ANS. And this will directly innervate the afferent arteriole, specifically the tunica media, the smooth muscle layer. And part of the tunica media are these just the glomerular cells also called the granular cells, the specialized smooth muscle of the afferent arteriole. So the less stimulation of the sympathetic vasomotor nerve will result in the vasodilation of the afferent arteriole. And this is what occurs during rest. Now, during intense exercise, or if we're faced with an emergency or crisis situation, where now our blood pressure is not between 80 to 180 millimeters of mercury, extrinsic controls will predominate. So there are two situations when this extrinsic control mechanisms will take over autoregulation. The first scenario has to do with a low blood pressure or low blood volume. When we have a drop in blood pressure, that's referred to as hypotension. If we have a drop in blood volume, that's referred to as hypovolemia. Causes would be blood loss called hemorrhage. So if we're hemorrhaging, we're losing blood. Therefore, I hope it makes sense that the blood volume will go down. In addition, if we have excessive fluid loss, such as in the case of chronic diarrhea, frequent vomiting, or excessive sweating, 
the fact that we're losing fluids will result in a decrease in our blood volume. And lastly, severe dehydration. And if we have a decrease in blood volume, we will have a decrease in blood pressure. Therefore, a decrease in mean arterial pressure, MAP. So our MAP can drop below 80 millimeters of mercury. So this is now where both neural and hormonal control mechanisms will now take over. So the second scenario where extrinsic controls will predominate and autoregulation will stop is when we have high blood pressure or high blood volume. So a situation where we have a high blood pressure or hypertension is during intense exercise, which I hope makes sense. So these are the two scenarios in which extrinsic controls will predominate. And their goal is to maintain systemic blood pressure. Let's now discuss the details of neural mechanism. The neural mechanisms are under the sympathetic control. In other words, the sympathetic division of the ANS. So the sympathetic vasomotor nerves will secrete the neurotransmitter norepinephrine, while the adrenal medulla will secrete the hormone epinephrine. So what are the effects of neuroepinephrine and epinephrine? For one thing, it'll result in systemic vasoconstriction, including the renal artery. And what this will do is it'll result in an increase in systemic blood pressure. How so? By an increase in the resistance. It will also reduce the blood flow to the kidneys, because if we vasoconstrict the renal artery, then this will reduce the renal blood flow. Less blood will flow to the kidneys. Neuroepinephrine and epinephrine will also result in the strong contraction of the granular cells, or the juxtaglomerular cells, that are part of the juxtaglomerular complex. And when we have strong contraction of the granular cells, then it will result in the vasoconstriction of the afferent arteriole, which will dramatically decrease the glomerular blood hydrostatic pressure. Remember, if we have a decrease in the glomerular blood hydrostatic pressure, then that means we're going to decrease the net filtration pressure. And if we decrease the net filtration pressure, then we decrease the glomerular filtration rate. Less filtrate is being produced per minute. And as a result, we are going to have less urine output. Less urine is being produced. So how does this apply when we're outside of the range in which autoregulation predominates? Let's consider a decrease of MAP below 80 millimeters of mercury. As I just said, neural and hormonal will take over. So what the body is now going to do in an attempt to increase systemic blood pressure, it will result in systemic vasoconstriction, including the renal arteries. Why do we have systemic vasoconstriction, including the renal arteries? It's because if we're dropping in MAP by vasoconstricting, such as the renal artery, it will increase MAP. It's trying to bring up our blood pressure. But by doing so, this potentially can affect our kidneys because less blood now will flow to the kidneys. In addition, the granular cells being stimulated by the sympathetic vasomotor nerve will result in strong contraction. So the afferent arteriole will vasoconstrict. In addition, the granular cells are stimulated to release renin. So the whole point of what the neural mechanism is trying to do is to reduce GFR, to reduce urine output. Because the last thing we need is to urinate more fluid. We do not need to lose more fluid. Now, what about if, let's say, it goes up to 180 millimeters of mercury? So now I want you to think of intense exercise. So if we're intensely exercising through neural regulation, it is now focusing on where blood needs to go. So during intense exercise, our kidneys take a back seat. 
Why? Because blood now needs to flow to skeletal muscles, to our heart, and to our lungs, organs that are involved in intense exercise. Consequently, there will now be a reduction of blood flow to the kidneys. So if there is vasoconstriction of the renal arteries and vasoconstriction of the afferent arteriole, this will result in a decrease of GFR and a decrease in urine output. It all has to do with getting the blood to the parts of the body that need it the most during intense exercise. Now, what about hormonal mechanism? How does that work? This is where we have RAS. RAS stands for the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system. This becomes activated when our blood pressure or our blood volume decreases. In other words, when we are hypotensive or hypovolemic. So the main mechanism of RAS is to increase the blood pressure and blood volume. Now, if we look at this system, notice the word renin is part of it. That's the R of RAS. So in order to get this system going, we need renin. And as I just said, the sympathetic vasomotor nerves will stimulate the granular cells of the juxtaglomerular complex to secrete renin. And later on, we are going to talk about RAS and how exactly renin is involved in this particular system. So before we move on to the next slide, just please be aware that when we involve hormonal mechanisms, specifically RAS, this is only when our blood pressure or blood volume is low. So in other words, only when we are hypotensive or hypovolemic does RAS become involved.